Hey everybody, today we are going to be talking about Screencastify and how you can use that to embrace the four C's within your classroom. I am Stella Pollard and I am the Instructional Technology Coordinator for Franklin County Schools. I'm previously a middle school science teacher and I am so happy to be able to be on here to share with you all some knowledge about some Screencastify. So here are the things that we're really going to be focusing on. What is Screencastify? How can, you, how can students use it? And why do we want students to use it? Screencastify happens to be the best Google Chrome extension ever. That is a knowledgeable fact. It's definitely not an opinion. 100% true. <laughs> um, it might be my opinion, but I think you should trust it. So with the Screencastify extension, you have the ability to record what's on the screen, but you also have a nice web camera that you can use in order to capture what's going on in front of the screen. I like to always share the cost with anybody because the light version, the free version, you get 10 minute video length limit. So you can make up to 10 minutes of video. You get 50 videos per month and you get a little Screencastify watermark in the corner. So um, it just says Screencastify up here and that's it with the light. So that's a really great free version. The premium version costs only $24 per year and it's billed annually, so $2 per month. You get unlimited recording length, unlimited videos, no watermark. You can expo, export as a MP4 or GIF, 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 I don't know, and you can crop and trim videos. And recently they've also added another thing here. You could also download as just the sound, so no video. So how do you get Screencastify? You go to the Google Chrome store, you search for Screencastify, or you could just go to screencastify.com and click add extension. Click on the extension, sign in with Google, click the extension again after you have clicked allow um, to give it access to talk to your Google account. Once you click on it the second time, you're ready to roll and you will see a screen that looks like this. If you look in this corner right here where this bell is, you're going to be able to click on that and you can see an ebook with over 50 ways to use Screencastify within the classroom. You totally want to check that out. It's a great resource. So with the Screencastify Premium and the, the free version, the light version, you get all three of these options. The browser tab, which just records just that one browser. That one's okay whenever you are staying on the same screen for the entire video. But like if you're in Google Classroom or something and you click on a different link that takes you somewhere else, you're going to be talking on that other screen and you won't be able to see what, what was on the other screen just on that one specific tab that you had open to begin with. You also have the desktop version. This is what I almost always select. It shows the bar at the bottom of the screen and your search at the top of the screen. But I find that it's just so much easier than remembering, oh, I've got browser tab open. Um, and then the web camera is exactly like what it sounds like. It's just using your webcam to record whatever is going on. The microphone, you can use a built-in microphone or one that has been attached to your computer. And you can also use your um, Chromebooks or your, your devices with web camera or an external webcam. Um, one other thing about this screen before I go on, all of these videos save directly to Google Drive or to YouTube. So you can pick where you want your videos to save. I found the YouTube shows just a little bit more clear and you can make those videos be unlisted. So they have to have the link in order to see them. Okay, so now let's talk about how we can empower students with this amazing tool. It's my favorite. So, number one, ready, set, animation. 
You can have students create flip books, acting out historical events, acting out a skit, modeling cell division or a cycle, working out a mathematical equation. We could talk about phenomena. We could talk about diving deeper into math problems. But students can use these in order to just animate. Notice that these are just little GIFs. And um, you don't have to download them as gifts. You could just have it pausing as you're going through. Um, I made this one actually on Google Slides. So um, you don't have to download them as a gift, but it's really easier if you do. <laughs> um, but this is what the flipbook style learning looks like. So in this video, the student would be given a math problem and they would show step by step on how they solved it. And then down here we have mitosis. Explain your thinking with paper. So have your students do it, write it on a piece of paper, and answer those problems. With math, we always have a hard time thinking about how we can utilize technology in order to empower student creativity. But you think about creating this video, this little flip book, and putting that inside of a flip grid or putting that inside of a wakelet, and then allowing other students to be able to go in there and see that. It's, it's amazing because students are afraid to ask teachers questions sometimes. It's just a known fact. But if they can privately go and watch a, a video of another student, somebody that they respect, showing them how to work out that problem, it's going to be so easy. So here's how I did that. Students can insert step-by-step -step images of their work on a Google slide. Insert, image and camera. And then... I just had, this is a Google slide. I just inserted those images and I used Screencastify to record my screen as I was going through each of those steps. You could also have students talking in this one as they are explaining how they solved that problem. So not only just for math, but you could use it for comic strips. You could use it for images for a story. You could show a phenomena happening. You could rethink your presentations. Have students create your presentation. We've all been there. We think, man, I want to have my students get in groups of four, and I want them to create a presentation. And that sounds absolutely wonderful. We think about ways that the children can create, and we then get to the presentation days. And it starts off so great until you realize that students have a very difficult time with practicing their presentations before they actually present them. So you could use this in one of two ways. Practice makes perfect before they actually present or let them record their presentations. They're still getting that public speaking skill and they're still sharing those out with their classmates. But instead of using four class periods, to go over presentations when all of them are talking monotone. Um, you could post these all into a wakelet or all onto a flip grid, and then everybody could watch and leave reflection pieces for each of the individual presentations. I found that with this way, students usually give more feedback and more comments because they have time to process the video inside of their head and they can write their questions down as they're watching the videos. Rethinking, reteaching, enriching. So this one kind of makes me feel like Michael Scott and Dwight doing the um, raise the roof because it makes me so excited. Whenever you're in the classroom, we know that differentiation is something that's so important, but we're only one person. So we can make videos to empower students while we can work with the different groups so we can be in more more uh, we can be in more than one spot at one time. Um, but you could also have students making those videos. Sometimes students learn better from each other than they learn from adults. That's just the truth. So that's an enrichment. You let those students who really get things easily create videos. That's a, that's a deep level skill. And they can use those videos then to help their classmates. Expertise. 
Those who do the teaching, those are really the ones that are learning. We know that. So give the students a topic and let them research it. Give them 20 minutes to find out all that they can. And then they screencast their findings. Just make a little blurb. They could draw pictures. They could insert pictures from the internet. They could use um, just a presentation or whatever. And they can really go deep into that. One of my favorite ways to utilize this one is for science. Like I said, I was a background science teacher. You give, let's say that we're studying natural disasters and the human's impact. So you could let students pick from a variety of topics, like how are plastic bottles impacting the environment? Or how are humans destroying habitats for other organisms? How is that impacting the environment? Let them go as deep as they can with that research and then share it out um, by making a video. And you can upload those once again to a Wakelet or a Flipgrid and um, share them with the rest of the class. Talk about student empowerment. They love this. Same thing can be gone. Same thing can be said about math problems, giving each student a different math problem and letting them work it out. They become the master with that strategy, whether it's using something like an array model or a sketch or just solving it out an equation, just so they can see different ways those problems have been expressed. Another favorite, have a newscast. Let your students dress up, tell them, you know, if you want to wear a blazer, you can or whatever. Buy yourself some cheap $1 tablecloths from the Dollar Tree or from the Walmart, whatever you prefer, and set up a table, put that tablecloth, put a backdrop behind them with another tablecloth and let them become news anchors. It's very cheap to do, but the students Love it. So this can be a current event that will allow the students to do a mock cast about maybe a breakthrough in science. Maybe it's relating to the Amazon forest right now or the um, hurricanes that are going on. It could be a history book moment. Have them reenact what they think a newscast would have said whenever a past event happened. Like maybe a news event from when George Washington was elected the first president of the United States. How cool would that have been to been able to see a newscast for that? Let them reenact it. They can do real life ratios. Tell a mathematical story about going to the supermarket and how the price of things are just so outrageous and how they have to decide which ratio is the best. Or it could be an increase in gas prices. What's causing those to drive up? A mock of a past historical event. I already said that one. Um, a movie book review. So it could be a less serious newscast, but more of a, a entertainment newscast or sports. Virtual field trips. This one makes me feel like Miss Frizzle. Like I love her. She's my spirit animal. So we're going on a field trip. Sorry, we're going on a trip in our favorite rocket ship. Nope, Google extension because Screencastify is awesome. Students can create their own Google Maps by pinpointing locations, Google Earth or Google Tour Builder. So they can use either of those three things in order to design a, um, an adventure. And if you click on any of these, I have linked them up there. So if you're unfamiliar with how to pinpoint or how to do any of what I just said, um, let me know and I'll, I'll totally hook you up or you can Google it. Anyways, <laughs> students can pinpoint their locations on any of these and then they can record, record themselves with Screencastify as they're talking through their virtual field trip. They're just a tour guide. So you can talk about biomes. They can go to different biomes and talk about what would be seen there. Talk about the um, different weather and climate in different locations. They can revisit the setting of a book and tell a story about how this relates to the book and how it tied to the story. They can find the area around your school because with Google Earth, 
you can use the area feature and then they can talk about all of the different parts and how much um, each section takes up of that school. They can visit different cultures and continents and talk about all of the things that are different there. And they can use storytelling skills to talk about random locations. So inside of Google Earth, they could just use that random drop, that little random dice and be dropped into a specific location that they know nothing about, but they could write a story about it. This was one of my favorite things to do inside of science, especially when we were studying earth science. So I would just click this dice and the teacher could just be the one showing Google on to a projector screen and then have the students record a video or you could let each student do their own. So this dropped me, I'm so lucky, this one dropped me into Universal Studios. So the student could then grab their little pig man and they could drop it anywhere that's blue and tell a story specifically about that location. You would be blown away with the creative ideas that the students were able to develop. One-to-one -one feedback. Students can open their peers' work. One-to-one -one feedback. Students love being able to hear our feedback. Um, so students can actually give peer-to-peer -peer feedback because sometimes they get tired of hearing us. They can leave their feedback for one another just by scrolling through and instead of typing out the responses, they could be actually verbalizing. So sometimes it's better if we talk out loud. I think sometimes we just give the best feedback that way. And they screencast those suggestions. Now the teacher can also do this. It doesn't have to be peer-to-peer. But then you just leave one comment for the whole thing, and it's a link to the um, work. Practice makes perfect. Have students practice their speeches and proofread their work aloud. Perfect for catching those simple mistakes that sometimes we miss. Virtual flashcards. I love 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 quizlet i love it but sometimes i want to make my own and i want to hear myself read them out loud or maybe sometimes we have an esl kiddo that really struggles to read but they're starting to understand english just a little so this is a way that we can really help them so students write down the vocabulary word they write down the definition and they can picture. Then they do a presentation mode of the Google Slides and use Screencastify to record themselves going over these and then they can listen to them anytime. Video dubbing. Have you ever had your students watch a video and they say, oh, I could do better than that. They can play a video with the volume muted and record their own narration. So they would just find a video and then they would talk over top of it. I was really bad at this one. So really they're just narrating over top of a video. Um, and then the last tip that I have for you is testing reading fluency. Comprehension and enjoyment are both tied to fluency, but how do we track it? With Screencastify, the students can record themselves reading and then go back to see how far their reading has come over a period of time. So, how easy is it for students to turn these video assignments into Google Classroom? They just simply go to the assignment and they'll click create, or sorry, they'll click add from Google Drive. And since these videos are saved to Google Drive, they could click the little um, arrow there and just search for videos and then find the video. And then it will be there for the teacher. So that is everything. I know that was a whole lot of information, but if you have any questions, please let me know and I'll be happy to help. Thank you.